Welcome back to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series. It is brought to you by the Mississippi State University Extension Service as well as the MSU Forest and Wildlife Research Center. I will be your presenter today. My name is Bronson Strickland and I want to acknowledge my colleague and the co-director of the MSU Deer Lab, Steve Damaris. As the name implies, this presentation is all about cool season food plots. I uh, want to review everything more or less that we've learned over the past 10 or 15 years. I uh, want to go over the most common forages, their nutrient profiles, which plants work well, which ones work well in mixes, and which ones deer are attracted to. When we're finished with the presentation, my goal is that you are going to feel completely equipped to know what to plant on your property and why. By no means is this every possible thing you could write about or talk about with cool season food plots, but I think it's a really good collection, certainly for people starting out to get you going. Now that we have wrapped up the cereal grains, I want to transition to the clovers. I'm always reminded of something a uh, former deer biologist for the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Kent Kammermeyer, used to always say a couple decades ago when food plots were really starting to become popular, he was a big fan of clovers and always said there's a clover for everybody, there's a clover for every situation. And I believe he is about right. There are a lot of different choices now and you can just about find a clover that fits what you need and what you want. So we're going to spend the next few slides reviewing all the clovers that I personally have some familiarity with and some experience with and we're just going to review their profiles and some of them potentially some pros and cons depending on what you're looking for. Okay, we'll start with crimson clover. I'm willing to bet that other than white clover, crimson is probably the clover people have seen the most, whether it be driving down the highway or looking in pastures, driving down the road. Crimson, as the, the name implies, produces this really big crimson colored flower, really beautiful and attracts a, a lot of attention. So it's very conspicuous and, and people can see it and see it from a, a long distance. So it has a really long history. It's been planted for decades and decades. Its production may be a little bit in the south in November, but primarily, j just like most of the clovers, is going to be, you're going to see the greatest growth yield, you know, biomass production in the springtime. With crimson, that's going to be in March and April. A lot of different varieties to choose from. For all of these clovers, I would highly recommend talking to an expert in your area. I recommend someone at your county extension service to someone you could check with or check with the university. But figure out which varieties are going to be best adapted for your soils, your temperatures, and things like that. The planting rate for crimson is a little bit more when compared to some other clovers, especially from what you're used to seeing with like white clover. A drill rate of 20 pounds per acre and 25 for broadcast. Just a reminder here too, all of these planting rates or seeding rates that I'm giving is for a fully stocked plot, a monoculture. In other words, one acre of crimson clover, this would be the rate. One thing that is really beneficial about crimson is that it reseeds very well. There's a lot of the clovers that aren't going to reseed nearly as well as crimson. So that, that is one thing and you know a story I always tell people, uh, I think this is really common in the south, it's very common in Mississippi. When you're riding down a lot of our highways or interstates, during April, you will see on the side of the road and in the median, you'll see crimson clover. And that's just a testament to how well it reseeds. I promise you the Department of Transportation is not planting clover every single year. That is just allowing the clover to grow, flower, go to seed, and it reseeds itself. So that's one of the big benefits of crimson clover. 
What I wanted to do for every one of these clovers is take advantage of an opportunity that we had with former graduate student Jacob Dykes, his project. We were looking at food plot selection, timing, uh, stuff like that, and he had trail cameras set out on every plot. And so I went through and was able to get, for most clovers, about every two to three weeks, uh, a picture just to demonstrate the the different rates of growth when they start to flower and when the, the clover matures and the flowers begin to die. So you'll see on all these clovers, I kind of have this going clockwise. So you'll see at the top a photo from March 2nd. We move to March 29th, April 11th, and then in the bottom right, we're into May, May 24th. But you can see this is a very typical growth cycle for, for all the clovers and certainly for, for crimson, we see that um, the cool season or the coldest part of the cool season, I should say, November, December, January, February, that is why having a cereal grain can be really important. It's really the warm temperatures and the time that it took for clover after germination is allocating a lot of its energy below ground, establishing a root system. And so during those cold months, you're not really seeing that much above ground biomass, not really providing a lot of food during that time of year with most clovers. They really hit their growth spurt when temperatures warm up and then the soil temperature warms up. And again, I said earlier, this really depends on the purpose of your plot. If it's just for observations during deer season, you can literally get by with just planting a cereal grain. Have a wheat and oats plot that will attract deer, it'll feed deer, you'll see deer. But if you're really uh, mindful or you really desire, you really want to change diet quality, average diet quality for deer on your property for the purpose of increasing antlers, increasing body weight, increasing condition, fawning rate, all those sorts of things consider adding a clover because now you have added another three months onto your growing season for your cool season plot. So that pretty much stands for all the clovers that I'm going to talk about, but just wanted to be sure we mention that. And so just look at the transition that takes place here from in the top left from March. We see the crimson clover. It's obviously there. It's growing, but not really producing a lot of biomass. We notice there the, the end of March and then April. So literally over about two weeks there, temperatures changing, and we notice the clover growing noticeably a lot more biomass, beginning to flower. And then in May, and especially at the end of May, we see that for crimson, it's pretty much all over. It has gone to seed. The flowers have died. Those seeds are going to fall to the ground and reseed itself. But notice that it's no longer producing green and palatable biomass once you get into May and especially late May. Here's what a fully stocked monoculture of crimson clover looks like and it, you know it's, it's just beautiful. If you're if you're after this for aesthetics only you you can't go wrong with crimson clover. It's just a, a gorgeous plant and a, and a good food plot species. So what I'm highlighting here is a characteristic that I want you to be mindful of with, with crimson. It, it grows really well. It produces a lot of biomass. Deer love it. But if you're wanting to extend your window of getting more growth out of your clovers from your cool season planting, this is one limitation of clover, is that when you get into May, it's past its prime. And you'll see or I have the little circles there on the slide. That is the seed head that is completely dead now. And it's hard to even find the clover, you know, green growing clover in the photo. You just see the domination by the, the rye there. So essentially, in terms of what it's doing for deer, when you get into in, in my neck of the woods and my latitude, etc., here in central Mississippi, it's pretty much done. So that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. What are some other options for clovers that will continue growing for another month and some for two months? 
Next is Balanza clover, and Balanza clover is relatively new in terms of on the, the deer food plot scene. And uh, in my area in central Mississippi, it has been very, very impressive. Its production is listed here as April to May, but it can go much further. It can go into June, all depending on your high temperatures. And one thing I have, I have literally seen is that once you have consecutive days where you're getting into the 90s or mid 90s, then Balanza is finished at that point. And uh, it, it'll literally look like over a period of three or four days, like it's been sprayed with, with glyphosate. It will just brown up uh, that quickly. But until you reach those really hot days, several in a row, it, it's going to continue to grow. Varieties, there are several. The planting rate, notice here, it's much less. So only five pounds per acre for drilling, eight for broadcasts. Keep that in mind when you're selecting a seed and you're looking at the price of the seed. Always relate it back to how much I'm going to plant and convert the price to cost per pound that I have to plant. And uh, that scales it a, a lot more realistically into what you are getting for your money that you're investing in the seed versus what you're going to get out biomass wise. It reseeds very well, maybe not quite as well as crimson, but I've had very good luck with it reseeding. And I'll show you uh, some examples here in a moment. What is also very interesting or very beneficial about Balanza is that it tolerates wet soil and dry conditions really well. Now that is not to say, if you remember earlier in the presentation, I showed you a picture of clover struggling in a mud puddle. I don't mean that. It's not going to grow underwater for days and days on end. But in some places where other clovers may not tolerate wet soil at all, Balanza seems to tolerate it very well. So keep that in mind in some of those spots where you may have some moisture problems. Just an example here on the left of the, the forage biomass that you get from Balanza. Notice the, the leaf size and, and notice above my cap there of the, the stem, which you may look at it and think, my goodness, that big giant stem is not going to be very palatable to deer. But what's interesting about Balanza and I'll show you another example later in the presentation, is that the, the stem is, is hollow, so it's not going to be a, a woody stem, a coarse woody stem, and that increases the amount of forage biomass that it's providing. I'm not saying the stem is as palatable as the, the trifoliate leaf there, but it is certainly not a hard woody stem like you may see with arrowleaf, for example later in the year. So that, that is a, a very beneficial characteristic of the plant. On the right, you see, when I was talking about crimson clover and how it reseeds itself, well, Balanza does a pretty good job as well. You see the timestamp there is May 22nd, and you can notice that it, it's still flowering, but some of the flowers are, are dying. And so it's, it's getting towards the end uh, of its growth cycle. But what is interesting is this is either the third or fourth year that Balanza has been in this really big food plot. It has not been replanted. That is all from it reseeding itself. So that is just a testament as to what Balanza can do when it can reseed itself. So again, sorry, I can't remember if that's year number four or year number three, but at minimum that is year number three and you see that plot is still fully stocked and just providing tons of, of biomass for deer. And here's my group of pictures like I had with the crimson starting in the top left. You see nothing really out of the ordinary there in March and then we move to April. You see the growth really beginning there, biomass production stimulated. Then we're down to uh, middle of April move into the beginning of May, you see the turkey's head <laughs> sticking up there. And you can also see in the cage behind it, the amount of biomass that's being produced. 
And then all the way until for, for this particular year, that was 2015, this particular year, around that time, really high temperatures and, uh, and the growth cycle ends. So literally over that month, you see the difference between the beginning of May and the beginning of June. The balanza grew all that it was going to grow, and you can see the amount of seed that is there that is going to reseed that plot. Bursine clover is a, another clover relatively new in the, the food plot world, even though the species, of course, has been around for a long, long time, really hasn't been known as, as a, a food plot forage for very long. What is very unique about Bursine clover, notice the production time there is November to December and then March to July. So notice that we're talking about some production as early as November and notice the window is extended until July. Now when it gets really cold there, December, January, February, it's alive, it's there, but it's really not producing anything. And then production picks back up when the soil temperatures increase again. A couple different varieties. Again, I recommend find a variety that's best suited for your area. Cold tolerance was an issue for a long time with Bersim, and that's probably why it lost favor in terms of forage production for cattle and then also for deer food plots. But a lot of the varieties that we have now, they have a cold tolerance. So they're not going to be actively growing when it's really cold, but they're going to stay alive. And then when the soil warms up, they start growing again. Not really compared to crimson or balanza. It's not going to be a good reseeder. And the planting rate is more similar to crimson clover. So drilling at 10 to 15 pounds per acre and broadcasting at 20. Here's my normal collage of, of pictures again. We're starting here at this series in uh, middle of March and end of March and on into the first week of April and mid-April and again very similar as you've seen with with all of the other clovers but in the next slide I want to show you something a little bit different. So this to me is one of those characteristics that's really useful and something for you to consider is notice the amount of growth that occurred in December on this particular plot. Of course this is all going to vary place to place and year to year. You could, uh, it could be a year where it got really cold or really quick and you may not see this, but in the southeastern U.S. this is something that you could expect. And so that is abnormal growth, at least in my neck of the woods, that is abnormal growth to see out of a clover on December 31st. And with these two photos, different plots, but both of them, one, uh, beginning of May one in the middle of May and notice on the left at the beginning of May we're not even seeing flower development yet. You can see the amount of biomass being produced this time of the year if you look inside the exclusion cage and then on the right May 13th we're just starting to see some flowering so we are still a couple weeks away from that clover maturing so a really solid choice for providing a lot of clover forage in May and on into June. Another example here, notice the date May 28th in central Mississippi. So at the very end of May, we see that most all of the Bersim is flowering here. And that tells me that there's at least gonna be a couple more weeks before the clover is gonna to begin to die. So here in the deep south, May 28th, and still seeing that amount of growth to carry on into June. One last example here. This is from South Mississippi. This is May 19th, and this I thought was a very productive mix, mixed with uh, the cereal grains, oats and wheat, and balanza and bursim. And so you can see the amount of biomass in the cage there. Outside the cage, you can see that the deer were utilizing it very heavily. That is a PhD student, Mark Turner, PhD student at the University of Tennessee, and he's admiring that amount of biomass as well. So 
very impressive plot in the southern part of my state and I thought it was just a very impressive mix. Red Clover and hey I don't make up the names here. I know the bloom does not look red at all it looks pink but whoever named it way back when they called it Red Clover so we got to go with it. Often confused with crimson meaning that People that see crimson clover think that it's red clover when in fact they are looking at crimson clover. So that's kind of the, the difference. That's a very common mistake. Production in the early part of spring is very typical to the other clovers. What is unique about red clover is it will give you the longest window of time. It will grow into July and I have even seen it grow into August, but it depends on the year. It depends on temperatures and soil moisture and things like that. But certainly it's you're going to get great growth in June and most often into July. People often call it a biennial, meaning that, hey, if you plant red clover, you're going to get two years out of it. And sometimes you do and sometimes it's more. An agronomist colleague and friend of mine says it's technically called a short lived perennial meaning you're not going to get like a white clover five, six, seven, ten years out of it. But what you will often see, and I have experience with this with a, a pasture near my house where I know the clover has not been replanted for at least a decade, is that uh, you will see the red clover, it is reseeding itself. So often people will think, hey, it, it is a perennial, it's not. It behaves as a perennial for a couple years, depending on growing conditions. But when you see it five or greater years later, it is because like crimson, and we talked about with Blansa, it is just reseeding itself. This clover has been around a long time. Therefore, there are a lot of different varieties and a lot of varieties that are specialized for different parts of the U.S. So again, check with an expert in your area for what grows best in your area. The seeding rate, 6 to 8 for drilling and 12 to 15 for broadcasting. I included this just to show you an up-close photo to show you the difference. Actually, three clovers are here. White is on the left, but notice the, the red clover and the crimson clover. Not only is the color of the flower different, but the shape of the bloom or the shape of the flower is different. Crimson a lot bigger and longer than red clover. So just some diagnostics there for you to help you differentiate the two. Here's my collage of red clover picks. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Again, we're starting in, in March on the, the top row and we get down into April and finally May at the bottom. So again, there's really nothing abnormal during this time of year. It's performing like a lot of the other clovers are performing that time of year. Again, what differentiates red clover is the production a little bit later in the springtime and early summer. And that's exactly what you see here. This, the photo date is June 7. So many, most of all the other clovers, they have flowered, they have matured and biomass has stopped and they are in the process of withering away and red clover is still growing strong here. So a good example of a clover that can be added to a mix to extend the growing season for your cool season food plots. So that's pretty remarkable when you think about it. A plot when you're mixing these species together, getting good growth from cereal grains the early part of the cool season and then adding a couple different clovers can extend that one planting on into June and sometimes July. Arrow leaf clover, another clover that's been around for a very long time regarding deer food plots. Really good biomass production. It's another one of those, like we talked about Bursim and red clover, it matures a lot later. And so you can get production from March and again, like red clover, even into July. A lot of different varieties there. Be sure to pick the one that grows best in your area. It has a uh, 
moderate seeding rate, drill 10 pounds per acre, broadcast of 15 pounds per acre. I think the one knock against arrowleaf clover that I've seen and I get a lot of feedback from people on is the stem. So it is almost a vining type clover. And so the stems can get really long and dense and, and almost woody. And so a, a lot of people don't like that, especially if you're in the cattle forage production. I've had a lot of people complain with their machinery that, that the stems can get tangled up and causes them a lot of problems. So some people don't like it. And that's a valid reason. Don't like it for that purpose. But in terms of just biomass production and the time of year it's growing, another solid choice. Some trail camera picks for the arrowleaf clover. Again, the, the same as all the, the others really for that time of year. I guess the one thing notable here is that, again, thinking back and comparing to a clover like crimson, is that all the way, this, this bottom right photo is at the end of May, and notice that arrowleaf is just beginning to flower. And you can also see the, the production inside the cage there versus outside. So absolutely no doubt that deer are browsing this plot, utilizing this biomass very heavily. And we have just, again, extended our window that we're providing forage on into June.